privilege to be in his presence tonight.
uh, this evening. I'm going to ask uh, Christopher if he would like to do that and help us out. Let's give joyfully to the Lord for his goodness. I could never praise him enough for the cross of
here saying, God, I surrender to you. Hallelujah. I surrender. Of your heart, I surrender. Just 
just give yourself to Jesus, he'll accept you. All to be my blessed Savior.
Hallelujah. You may be seated. God bless you. You know, when he came into this world, he could have been born in a palace. After all, he was king of kings. But he came into a humble manger. It was just a cave, really. A cave in the side of a hill where they placed the little lambs when they were born. Why did he come such a humble way? Just to let us know that our hearts can become his home as well. Amen. Amen. Doesn't matter where we've been. We turn it all over to Jesus. He will wash us in his precious blood. And he will cleanse us and make us a brand new creature. Hallelujah. He'll give us a new start in life. Amen. Hallelujah. We've all experienced that. Amen. God is able to save from the uttermost. To the guttermost. It doesn't matter where we've been. When some people are up and out and uh, they have so much that they don't feel their need for God. They need saving just as much as somebody who is down and out. But it doesn't matter whether we're up and out or down and out. Jesus is for you. Amen. And he's for me. And he came to save us. And we appreciate Brother Shannon. He's going to come at this time and uh, deliver the word of the Lord to us. say thank you to our pastor for allowing me this uh, this honor and uh, to just stand in front of this uh, this audience and to teach the word of God in any way is uh, it's very humbling and it's been a while it hasn't been all that long I'm looking out and I'm trying to wonder I'm trying to think as to whether or not I've, uh, I've seen each one of you or even preached in front of you some of you I was your youth pastor Sierra's laughing my wife's probably laughing harder but uh, that's a story that any of you don't know will tell you. It's kind of fun. It's ridiculous. But hey, God has his way. And so uh, tonight I, I'm going to bring you the word of God as it's been placed on my heart. Uh, the pastor came to me a while back and asked me if I would uh, if I would preach. And God's been dealing with me for about three weeks. And uh, I don't know about you, brother, but he, he's very subtle at first and he begins to expand things. And Sometimes he expands it way beyond my, my own intellect, that's for sure. I'd like to think that I'm an intellectual person, that I understand things and that type of thing. But God shows me that my understanding is very minute. <laughs> and uh, even compared to, I think, most people, sometimes sometimes I wonder if it's just one of those things where people like to see me bumble along and they're like, hey, I'm going to put this person up here that has a hard time, let's do it. <laughs> Thank you, brother. He's reminded me, hey, use the mic, and of course I'm going to get up here like this and my sound person is going to have to correct everything. Thank you. God bless our sound people. They're very, very, uh, very, very useful in the church for sure. Yes. Take a lot Amen. of stress off us. Yes. All right. I'm going to um, teach tonight. And uh, first of all, I'm going to start with a story. There was a man, and I, I'm not very much for staying on the pulpit. Some of you know that. Some of you know I'm not much for staying on the stage. There was a man down in Arkansas, and uh, he was needing a, a source of income. We all need a source of income. I mean, we live in the world. We can't live outside of it just yet. And uh, But he was needing a source of income. And he began to, to try and figure out, okay, what can I do? And he went down in an old truck. In fact, I've seen this old truck. And uh, I don't remember exactly what kind it was. But he went down and he bought a whole truckload of watermelons. Everybody likes watermelons beside myself. I'll eat a whole watermelon myself. I, I immediately would regret it, but I would eat a whole watermelon myself. And um, down south, where I'm from, the watermelons are about this long, and they're they're cylindrical. They're not round like they are up here. And I don't know if it's just a different species, or I don't know. But um, they're still good. And I don't care what species or type of watermelon you give me. I love watermelon. Do I have anybody else up to here that likes salt on your watermelon? Ooh, they say, but they haven't tried it yet, right? All right, well, maybe they have. I don't know. But I like salt. Sometimes I put pepper in my watermelon. But anyways, this man went and he bought a whole pickup truck full of watermelons. I can't eat that much. I can't eat that much. He didn't have the intention of eating, though he had the intention of selling them. And he bought them because he bought so many of them. He was able to buy them at a cheap price. And he went and he sat in front of a store that he knew of and he began to sell these watermelons. 
And he began to sell them, of course, for a bit more expensive than what he bought them for. And then he took those, or he took that money that he made, and he went and he bought more watermelons. And he came back to the store. I get the feeling this was in the summertime. He came back to the store again, and he set up again and began to sell again. But this time he had more money, and he began again to go and buy more watermelons. And he did this over and over again until he made enough money in order to build an income for himself and for his family. Now, some of you might know this man, and for the rest of his life, by the way, this man built a large income for himself and for his family that still continues on today. He passed away some years ago, but his old truck is still in a museum. That museum is in Bentonville, Arkansas, and the man you might know as Sam Walton began selling watermelons. And we'll let you know that the power of persistence is strong, but you have to have a goal and you have to have faith in that goal. If you do not have faith in the goal, you will never take action. The book of James talks about it in such a way as it says that faith without action is dead. It's useless. So if you don't have a living faith, one that takes action, you get nowhere. And I don't believe that our God has called us just to the basic faith. See, Sam Walton started off with a, a pickup truck full of watermelons. That was his foundation. Many of you shop at Walmart. How many of you went to, sh to shop at Walmart in the last month? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And now there's a wall. There's Walmarts all over the United States. There's Walmarts all over Canada. There's Walmarts on the other side of the world because this man started with a dream. He started with a goal, and he had faith in his goal, and he continued to take action over and over and over again. Now sometimes an action that we take seems as though it's just so small that it's not going to make a difference. And I don't think that Mr. Walton thought for a moment when he was uh, when he was driving that old truck of his back up to that farmer and saying, I need another load of watermelon, that he was going to make a huge deal. I think that he probably started off, you know what, I want to make some money. And then he realized, you know what, this works. And tonight I want to teach about the way that God works in your life to reveal himself to you not only once, but over and over again and more and more until he gets to a point where his revelations to you begin to spill out on other people that you come across. Yeah. All right. In the, the book of Romans, the first chapter, starting at the 15th verse. You know, forgive me here. I'm going to be reading from the um, from the North American Standard Version. And so what I'm going to be reading word for word might be a little bit different than what's up on the screen, but it's the word of God. It's just a little bit different translation. Paul was uh, reaching out to the people in Rome. As you know, the people in Rome aren't necessarily Jews. Many of them probably were, but not all of them. And so he was reaching out to the Gentiles, though, and he says, For my part, I'm eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in the righteousness of God, I'm sorry, for in it, that means in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. That is, is, that is, as it is written, but the righteous man shall live by faith, unbelief. I'm sorry, the next part is talking about unbelief and its consequences, which is exactly the opposite. And of course, all through the Bible, we understand that faith is the positive and doubt is the negative. Right. If you believe in yourself, you will take action. But if you doubt yourself, oftentimes you will, you will begin to call yourself. You'll kind of, kind of hold yourself back. And I'm a firm believer that no one can hold you back without you agreeing to it. Right. Right. No one can. And God refuses to hold you back. In fact, God is always calling us, saying, come up a little bit higher. In fact, the, the John the Revelator, when he was writing, he said, I kept hearing a voice, come on, come up higher. I want to show you something else. I want to reveal myself to you. God has always been seeking to reveal himself to mankind. From Adam to now, he's been seeking to reveal himself to us. You look in the Garden of Eden, and God began to reveal to Adam righteousness. He said, look, I want to give you a choice. I want to give you freedom, but I also want to commune with you. I want to be with you. I want to talk to you. And I can't imagine the information that God put into Adam's head as they were walking through the garden. It must have been astounding because having that type of communication with God, wow, we don't have that today. That was before sin entered the world. 
But God has continually sought to bring himself, to bring us closer to him, rather. In Hebrews, the 11th chapter in the first verse, Paul, uh, I believe it was Paul, I mean, most, most people believe it was Paul, begins to describe faith. And he says, faith is the confidence in which we hope for, in, I'm sorry, in what we hope for, and the assurance about what we do not see. In other words, when you have true faith, not only do you say, I believe, but you actually take an action on it, right? You have confidence in it. How many of you drove here tonight? Yeah. How many of you, when you put your key into your car, you weren't really, you know, you weren't really thinking maybe, mm, maybe it's not going to work. Yeah. Sometimes, how many of you have ever been that way though? Right? It was like, ooh, <laughs> you wonder if your car is going to start. That's not a good feeling. That's not faith. That's, that's doubt in your car, isn't it? And yet, a lot of people, they treat God that way. I've treated God that way before. I pray, but I'm not sure. Right? And I have no reason to. It's, you know, God's never been the one to be, nye, 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 nye. Nye, 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 nye. No, uh -uh. God, God's right there. The Bible says that he's, he's immediate. He's, he's right there on the scene. He's a sure help. I can't remember the exact phrase that the, that the Bible uses. I, I enjoy the fact that it says that he's a, he's a present, what is that? A, a present help in the time of trouble. Yeah. In other words, he's not just sitting off over, oh, you need help? Hold on, I'll be there in a minute. No, no, no. He's right there. Boom, right then. He's just, he's waiting. And that's how God is. God, again, I told you, he, he wants to reveal himself to you. He wants you to know him better. And so he reaches to you, but he doesn't reach to you from a ways off. Look how intimate Jesus Christ was with the people around him. The Bible says that he went through and he touched the sick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It says he went to their houses. He would go and have dinner with them. Zacchaeus, I know you're not well liked, man. I know that you had to go up in that tree because no one was going to lift you up on their shoulder and say, hey, man, that's Jesus over there. I know that you had to seek me out. And because you sought me out, I'm coming to your house. That was a very, very close circumstance back then. That's why the people looked at it and they said, really? He's going to Zacchaeus' house? That was an honorable thing. And you can imagine if someone in a high position of honor come to your house, what do your neighbors think? Oh, yeah. They automatically begin to esteem you. They automatically begin to say, you must be important. You've got some, you got some friends in high places. And Jesus was exceptionally popular. He was not well liked by the Sadducees and the Pharisees, but he was exceptionally popular. And when he began to reach out, people began to take notice. And what it was is God was reaching out. God was trying to build them up. In 2 Peter, I'm going to read from a, a version. I told the, the, our sound people that I was going to read from a version that's not very well known. I just like the way that this puts this out. In 2 Peter, the first chapter... And I'm going to start at the third verse. I'm reading what's called Easy English. And to, to reference, this comes from the, the app called My Sword Bible. And I just like how simple this is. Sister Gowan and I have laughed about some of the translations that this gives. And so I read over this and I was like, I agree with this. What I want here is the New, in, uh, the new International Version is up on here. That's a version most of you are more familiar with. But I'm going to read here. God is very powerful because he is God. I said it's easy English, okay? It's English I can understand. So he has given to us everything that we need to live always. We can do good things that make God happy. This is possible because we know him. God has chosen us to be his people because he is so very great and so very good. And also because of this, God has promised that he will do, a very, do very great and valuable things on our behalf. As a result, you can become good like God. How many of you want to be like God? Yeah, even Satan wanted to be like God. He just had the wrong side of it. He wanted all the authority and the power. He wasn't looking to be good, right? But we're supposed to be looking to be like God in the way that he's good, to show love. So you can be free from wanting bad things that will destroy you. The people who belong to this world want to do bad things, and those bad things are destroying them. Pretty simplistic. God has done all this on your behalf, so you should not only believe Christ, you must also try very much to do always what is good. And you must... Try very much to know God more and more. That's what I'm talking about tonight. Revelation through faith. God reaching you. But you have to try too. 
You can't just skate along and it's, this isn't a slideshow where God's going to open and then this and then this and then this. You have to actually put some effort into it, right? Living faith and actual, uh, an actual motion. You must not only know God. This is, I'm sorry, this is uh, verse 6 that I'm at. 2 Peter 1 uh, verse 6. You must not only know God, but you must rule yourselves properly also. I think we're right here. Okay. You must not only rule yourselves, but you must continue to be patient and brave also. And you must not only be patient and brave, but you must also make God happy. You must do what God wants. You must not only make God happy, but you must be kind to each other also. You must love other Christians as you would love your own brothers and sisters. And you must not only love other Christians, but you must love all people also. You should do all of these things and you should continue to do them more and more. These things will show you that you really know our Lord Jesus Christ. And because you know him, you will work well on his behalf, and your work will have good results. But some people do not do these things. They do not think that these things are important. They are like people who cannot see clearly. They cannot really see anything. They have forgotten that God made them clean inside themselves. This is verse 9. Thank you for keeping up with me there. God made them free from all the wrong things that they did before, but they have forgotten that. So, my friends, try even more to do all these, these good things. Do them because God has chosen you to be his own people. And these good things will show that you really are God's people. If you do these things, you will never turn away from God. Also, God will be very happy. He will bring you into that place where Jesus Christ will rule always. And you will live always with our Lord Jesus Christ who, ser uh, who saves us. So I will continue to tell you about these things again and again. You already know these things, and you are continuing to believe strongly that the. And you, I'm sorry, you are continuing to believe strongly that these things are true. But still, I will continue to tell you, tell you about them. I will tell you about them while I am still alive on earth. I think that it is right to continue telling you. You should think about these things so that you will not forget them. This was just Peter talking to the church. And he was saying, this is so important that I'm going to tell you over and over and over again. And I apologize for how elementary that, that reading is, but I like how elementary it is. It's just so simple. You have to do this, and then you do this. As you look upon the, the, the NIV version, if you can put it back up there again for me, I think it's in verse 4. All right, number 5, sorry. He starts off and he begins to say, make every effort to add to your faith. So you start off with simple faith. Right. Simple faith. God exists. Right? And many times we come across people who they may not have the interest in going to church. And they, they probably know that they're not living according to the Bible, but they'll admit that God exists. Right. And they begin to, you know, they'll, they'll talk to you that far. But what's happening is God wants to reach out to them and to reveal himself. Some people have allowed God to reveal himself more. They've had more faith. They've added to their faith. If you look, at it says to add to their faith, um, pull <laughs> add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge. In other words, add knowledge to your goodness. What are you doing? You're building, right? Because you believed, because you believed, you start acting in a different way. Right? Instead of only saying, hey, I want this, and I want that, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to take that. You begin to look out and say, I need to do good things. I need to be charitable. I need to reach out to people who need help. Amen. Right? Yeah. And then it says, to add to your goodness knowledge. What's it saying? It's saying, now that you've learned that there's a better way to live, now start learning about me. Read the word of God. Understand who I am a little bit more. Go on to the next verse. It says, Add to your knowledge self-control. All right? Self-control is strong because it allows you to consider that persistence. You're going over and over again. How many of you like to do the same task over and over again? Good. I don't either. I want to do it once and done and step away. Find something else to do. That's me. And sometimes I get stuck in this circumstance. How many of you end up doing tasks over and over again? Yeah, every single hand or somebody nod and something like that. Yeah. Especially those who, who have a job, you go in, and I do the same thing over and over again. I can tell you exactly what I'm going to be doing come 5 o'clock Tuesday evening. At 5 o'clock Tuesday evening, American time, I'm going to be vacuuming rugs in the United States Postal Service. If you want to come see me, that's where I am. 
It's loud. I'm going to have my earbuds in. I'm not going to hear as you come in. You probably scare the living daylights out of me. Okay? But that's where I'm going to be. It's mundane. It's boring. I don't like it. But it's needed. It's perseverance. And we go on and it's consistent. I'm doing it over and over again. This is needed. But the thing is, God does not want us to stay in one position. Can you play that first gift, the one um, where you're just hanging on? God doesn't want us to just hang on to our first faith. This monkey here, you can see, he's just hanging on. He's found a vine. Oh, man, I'm having fun. But where is he getting? Nowhere. He swings away and ends up coming right back to the same tree. And he swings away and he comes back to the same tree. Probably smack his head up against it. And it probably didn't help him any. But, but he never get, ends up getting anyway, anywhere. But instead, if you can go to the next one. Instead, if we can reach for something just a little bit beyond that, you can see this guy, he's getting places, right? He reaches up, grab that next time. That's what the word of God is saying. He's saying you live from faith to faith. Once you start off with small faith, add to that faith. Those things that you know about, add to them. Add to your knowledge that you need to be good. Add to that a knowledge of the word of God. Add to the knowledge of the word of God. Now add in self-control and begin to do the word of God and act on your faith. And continually move forward. You know that the word of God says that we should pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. You know that the word of God says that we should reach out to our brothers and our sisters that don't know God yet. And to, and to reach to them through kindness. Do so. You know that the Bible says that these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they will, they will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. This is our job. This is our work. We are not called to say, you know what? Oh, I received the Holy Ghost. I'm just going to swing right here holding on to this one. This one only. This is the only thing I've ever gotten. Just this one revelation. No. That is not how we, how we grow. You get re revelation after revelation after revelation. Jesus was talking to Peter. And he said, who am I, Peter? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus responded to him and said, Peter, you are right. And he said, and on this rock, I'm going to build my church. On what rock? Yes. On what rock? On the rock of the revelation of the power of Jesus himself. Yes. That I am God is what he was saying. And I'm going to build. I'm going to build. I'm going to start with the knowledge that I am God and I'm going to build upon this revelation after revelation after revelation, line upon line, precept upon precept, brick upon brick. And he will choose those bricks and he will stack them in the way that he wants them to be over and over again. God shows that not only is he organized and has a plan for things, but that he wants those things to build. He, yeah, Paul, Paul began to say, don't go back into the milk of repentance. He said, I want to teach you something. And you can't just stay in this part where you're still a baby the whole time. Babies don't get much done. Lev is a gorgeous little guy. Leo's awesome. I love these kids. All these kids are, they're hope, right? We look at them and we say, these kids are going to grow up into the next generation. And we have hope through that. But right now, Lev can't drive me home. Yeah? Yeah? Leo can't cook a meal for me. It's not going to work. They haven't learned these skills yet. And if a Christian gets the Holy Ghost and that's all they ever get to, they are so missing their potential. Yes. And every single person would let you know immediately if a child is not moving into the next stages, don't we all have this like, what is it called? The what to expect when you're expecting? Is the first thing. And everybody's tracking those stages of the baby as it's growing before it's born. And then it's born. And then there's what is it? The, there's all the books out there. There must be a thousand of them that talk about, oh, at this age, this is happening. And at this age, this is happening. And you go to the doctor and the doctor's measuring the growth of the baby. Right? And they have like this percentile thing. The, the, the weird graph that has all the, yeah, this is where it's supposed to be. Right? And if it's not within a certain parameter, we get, we get concerned. We get worried. If it's over that parameter, eh, really not. It's like, wow, it's going to be a big kid, right? We get concerned about maybe the, the, the other kids. You know, if he goes in there and he's playing basketball, he, he's going to make this seem unfair. No, but we look for growth. That's what we're looking for. Amen. And God wants the same thing. He says that it's from faith to faith. 
So you start off, you start off in the knowledge God exists. And there should immediately be a question. What are you gonna do about that? And so you react and say, well, I realize that God's God and that means he's all powerful. And so maybe I wanna know what he wants, right? And you move on from there and say, okay, into obedience. And simple obedience, okay, God told me to repent, to stop doing bad things. God told me to move forward and to, and to begin praying. And you begin to build on to that knowledge. What are you doing? You're taking your faith and you're building on to your faith. Amen. I assure you that when Jesus called Peter, and they're standing on the shore, and, he began, and he, the first time he called him, Peter didn't just step out of the boat and walk to him on the water. It didn't happen. No. There, there was a lot of faith building going on. Right. And faith building goes like this. You believe, you take action, mm -hmm. and God completes it. Amen. And then you look back at that and find that that monkey swung from the first time. You look back at that and you say, you know what? And sometimes, well, I'll get, that, get to that. But we, we look at it and say, you know what? I believed, I prayed, and I took action, and I let God do it. So I've got this next thing that I want to, you know, that I'm needing. And so I believe. I take action and I let God complete it and I grab the next fine. Now we're moving. Amen. Now we're beginning to grow. And then you can look back at those and go, you know what? God did this and God did that. And so he can do this right here too. Mm. And then you go from there. God did this, this, and this. He can do this. What's happening? Your faith is getting bigger. It's getting stronger. It's having more of a substance to be built upon. There's a foundation there that can't be shaken. And you realize over and over again. And there's nothing wrong with looking back at the first vine that you swung from. That thread that you began to build this out of and to begin to, to make it bigger and bigger. You can look back and say, I came from there. That's a good thing. Yeah. You can look back and see how far God has brought you. But God wants to bring you far. Don't stop at just the Holy Ghost. Don't stop at, you know, hey, God's, you know, begun to speak to me a little bit. And I think, no, keep on moving. Amen. Keep on, reach out for that next, as Paul said, covet the best gifts. In other words, want them really, really bad and chase after it. Mm. Right? That's what we're supposed to do. Mm. Signs are supposed to be following us. Right. That's right. We're supposed to be reaching out and actually having an actual effect Amen. on the people around Praise us Lord. Yes. through laying on hands and healing. Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be happening. Amen. Through even, I mean, hey, you know what? If God puts it upon your heart and you can raise the dead, can, can, you, can you get a hold of me? I'll, 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 I'll ask for the day off, <laughs> right? But that's the thing. We're supposed to be doing the will of God and the will of God, you go from, Natural to supernatural, mm -hmm. right? Yes. That's, that's how things are supposed to be, be done. And sometimes it doesn't feel very natural. Am I right? right. It doesn't feel like, uh, should I? And we begin to doubt. And it's totally natural for you to doubt yourself. And it's supposed to feel kind of strange. You know, whenever you're reaching, whenever the monkey's reaching for that next vine there, you know, to be honest with you, He's got a little bit of an idea. Okay, that'll take me to there as long as it holds. Mm -hmm. And as long as I can hold on to it, right? But I don't think that if he, think, if he thought for a moment that it would actually fall, that he'd reach out and actually hold on to it. He certainly wouldn't let go of his first faith, would he? Mm -hmm. Right? And it's the same thing. The Bible says to try the Spirit, to see if they're God. Whenever you begin to reach out into the spiritual realm and God begins to talk to you, yes, Satan's going to try and, you know, he's going to try and give some interference. Try the Spirit. Does this match what the Word of God says? Does this go with my original faith, those things that I know? See, that's how faith is supposed to be. Faith faith is, is totally done away with at the end of it. You know, someday I'm going to be in heaven. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to just believe in heaven anymore. Mm -hmm. Someday I'm going to see Jesus Christ. And I'm not just going to have to believe in what I've been told. Right? right? And the Bible actually talks about the Holy Ghost. Did you know that as, as amazing as the Holy Ghost feels... And amaze, as amazing as the things that can be done through the Spirit, it's just a tiny, tiny taste to the point where the Bible says that this is just a sample 
-hmm. It literally says that. The Bible talks about that the Holy Ghost is an assurance that it exists. In other words, oh, you need proof? Well, there. I'm going to give you just as much as you can handle. Because that's the truth. We can't handle the full thing. But in that time, we can. Yes. But it's not faith anymore. You're not having to believe without the evidence. Mm -hmm. You're actually stepping forward and, ex and experiencing it then. Mm -hmm. But that's where we're supposed to go. Build on your faith. Reach for that next vine. And our pastor, he'll, he'll move forward in the circumstance and encourage you. If you have questions, ask him. The man would love to answer questions about the Bible, about spiritual circumstances that you come up against. If, you, if you're praying and, and you feel a, a, a nudge to do something, ask him. The man, it's his job to lead our church. That's what his job is, to, to lead you into a, a more secure relationship with God, to help you get the revelation of who God is. And God started off and he said, you know, first off, I want to talk to Adam. And I don't know if God, you know, if Adam ever, you know, had a, any more than a, a spiritual, hey, I can kind of make this out. I don't know. This was, again, this is before the fall. But all throughout history, God began to try and reveal himself to people. And the people that would respond, they were actually making that the headway in life. They were making something of themselves. He reached out to the people in Noah's age. He said, this is what's supposed to be done. And he reached out through Noah. Noah, Noah spent a hundred years trying to minister to people and try to spark their faith that God was real. And it's, it's over and over again that God has sent people to prophesy. And God has sent people like Elijah and like all of the prophets that we read. What's he doing? He's trying to reveal himself. But he doesn't want to stop at just a small revelation. He doesn't want you to stop at, yeah, God exists. Mm -hmm. There's so much more to God. Yeah. Build on your faith. Grab that next vine. Mm -hmm. Move forward. Take that which that you've gotten and build upon it mm -hmm. and make it bigger. Yeah. I love you guys. And uh, I'm probably quite short tonight. I don't know. But I love y'all, and um, I don't know what the pastor wants to do for me. Again, just reaching out for leadership. Thank you, brother. Praise the Lord. Wasn't that a great word? Amen. And somebody had asked who this was. This is Brother Shannon Bitts, all the way from Oklahoma, <laughs> originally. But he's... Um, He's uh, lived in these parts for quite a few years, probably a couple decades, I'd say, and uh, in Charlotte County for the last little while, and Old Ridge Church, and now uh, has been coming here for probably about five years, I think, maybe, maybe a little over that, he and his family, and uh, he's brought a good word to us. How many of you want to go forward in the Lord? Amen. Amen. You know something? You can't steer a parked car. you got to be moving. You say, well, I don't know what to do. Do whatever God's moving upon you to do. Take that next step. And I guarantee you that as we walk forward with the Lord, God will walk with you and God will guide you and you will see great things. Amen. The person that sits still and says, I've come as far as I want to go. They're not going to experience the glories of God and all the kingdom of blessings. But when you and I are willing to go forward, even taking a little step, the Bible says, draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. How many have felt the presence of God so great and rich this day as we have worshiped, as we prayed, as we fellowship, as we've enjoyed the good word of the Lord? God's presence has been here. I don't know about you where you are tonight in your heart, but I want to get closer to this God that I love and that's done a work in my life. And so we're going we're gonna to just open up the altar and take some time and pray and uh, you may need special ministry. You want special prayer for healing or for uh, just for strength or, or um, whatever you might need. And then just come and find a place of prayer. You can stand or you can kneel or you can sit if you'd like. But just come and be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And uh, yeah, uh, actually, um, if you would like to come and maybe we'll sing that song uh, in the key of F, Draw Me Close to You. You know that one. You can bring up the words for that, Susan. That would be great. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. Amen. We just want to move closer to the Lord. Bring up that first verse if you found that. Draw me close to you. Draw me close to you. 
never let me go. Can we all just come to the altar tonight and pray? Lay it all down again. Do you say that I'm your friend? You were my son. Feel the warmth of your 